so we were talking about coarse graining dynamical systems such as maps and we saw how in the case of a simple tent map an asymmetric tent map we saw that the coarse graining into two cells a left cell and a right cell led to a matrix w of transition probabilities and I left it to you as an exercise to check that this really was the transition matrix for a Markov chain. So I hope you have done it and convinced yourselves that indeed the dynamics reduces to that of a Markov chain. Let me spend a few minutes now and explain a little more in detail what we mean by a Markov chain so that in general this concept becomes familiar to you because it is extremely useful. Uh, this is the discrete time analog of a continuous time process the Markov process which we talked about a little bit. So let me uh, explain again what we mean by Markov chains okay. So we imagine there is a random variable which takes on a discrete set of values suppose you take these values to be x1, x2, x3 etc and we work in discrete time just as in the case of maps and let me label the values of these uh, of this random variable x sub j j equal to 1 2 3 and so on. So I label these values by just j and when the random variable takes the value x j I say that the system is in the state j. So from now on we do not worry about the x's itself we just talk about the state of the system and that is labeled by an integer. This set of integers could be finite or infinite. So the number of possible states of the system could be finite could be infinite but it is discrete and countable in this fashion and now we ask what is the probability p that at some specific instant of time n discrete time the state is j that is the probability that the system is in the state j at the time n and we ask what is the sort of rate equation you write for this and this becomes on the right hand side because we have now a discrete set of states you have a summation rather than an integration and this probability depends on the preceding step and nothing more than that. So it is equal to p a summation over all the possibilities k p k of the probability that the system is in the state k and then makes a transition from the state k to the state j at a certain rate a transition rate which we wrote as w. So this is equal to w from the state k to the state j so w uh, I am not sure how I wrote this the last time we wrote this as w j k I wrote this as w j k or k j it is a matter of k j. Yeah, this is the initial state and that is the final state. So what did I write this as? Jk. Jk. Oh, I just wrote it in the same order. Jk. Transition probability from state k to state that was my definition so this becomes w w j k p k at time n minus 1 having reached the state k at time n minus 1 it then jumps from k to j so that it contributes to pj of n at time n minus there is a loss rate which is kj pj at time n minus 1. This is the chain equation this in fact is the master equation not the chain equation it's the master equation for a Markov chain. Okay. Now of course you have to specify some initial condition you have to say in what system state the system is in could be in a distribution of states or could be in a specific state if it is in a given state then of course you would say pj at time 0 if this thing here is in a specific state let us call, call that state L for instance at time 0 then this thing becomes equal to delta J L okay. 
So it is 1 if j is L and 0 otherwise. So the task is to solve this set of this equation here with those initial conditions and of course exactly what we wrote down earlier plays, uh, comes through and that is if I define a, a vector a column vector P of n which consists of P1 of n P2 of n etc. Then this whole business could be written as P j of n is W times P P of n W P at n minus 1 where there is a certain matrix whose elements are given can be read off from this equation and this of course immediately implies that P of n is equal to W to the power n P of 0 and that is the formal solution to the Markov chain. Now there is a way of classifying these Markov chains this is a systematic classification depending on what kind of transition matrix or transition matrix of transition probabilities W that you have. Okay. If it is possible to go to any state in the Markov chain from any initial state then we say that this chain is irreducible because there is a connection between any state and any other state maybe not in one step but given enough time if this is true then this chain is irreducible. If it turns out that there is a flip flop between a few states for instance if from state 3 you go to 5 to 7 and back to 3 and so on then you can have these periodic cycles these Markov chains in between but if no such periodic cycles exist then you say the chain is aperiodic and in general the non-trivial cases are those where it is non aperiodic as well as irreducible so that all states are connected up in this fashion. So everything depends on the nth power of this matrix and we know that this matrix can be put in Jordan canonical form by a similarity transformation after which rise, raising it to the nth power is a matter of algebra. So in principle this Markov chains can be solved. Some technical difficulties arise if this summation goes on till infinity. So from 1 if it goes up to infinity then you have to worry about convergence questions of convergence of these matrices of uh, what you mean by uh, the nth power for arbitrarily large n and so on arise some technicalities arise but otherwise in principle this is all that a Markov chain does okay. and the whole thing is guided by what this W does this thing here. Okay. A very important question which is important for us too in the context of dynamical systems is does this thing reach a steady state at all is there any stationary distribution associated with it is there a quote unquote analog of an equilibrium state an analog of critical points in the case of dynamical systems or fixed points in the case of maps is there an analog of that in Markov chains and the answer is yes and that is very important we would like to know if after a long time if there is any invariant probability distribution just like an invariant measure is there something that does not change under further time iteration at all. So is there a limiting form to this as n tends to infinity is there some kind of equilibrium distribution if so it says that the distribution at time n does not change at all from that at n minus 1 as n tends to infinity and that would happen when you equate this to that and you solve for the invariant distribution on both sides. If you recall in the case of continuous time Markov processes and continuous time we ended up with an equation which looked like delta P over delta T was equal to some W on P of T and I pointed out that the stationary distribution would correspond to a right eigenvector of W with 0 as the eigenvalue because you want delta P over delta T to be 0. So you would like to have a non-trivial eigenvector such that when W acts on it from the left you get 0 on the right hand side and the right hand side was pretty much something like this except that it was in continuous time and what did we say then well if this vanished if this quantity vanishes then you have a steady distribution there are many ways in which this sum can vanish you would have to solve a set of homogeneous uh, simultaneous equations but one important way which happens in many physical problems is if each term in this bracket vanishes if term by term this vanishes then you have a steady distribution which obeys a principle called detailed balance 
in other words if the steady or equilibrium distribution let me label it as p equilibrium j it is independent of time this thing here one possible solution is that this solution is such that w j k p k equilibrium is equal to w k j and this is called detailed balance. It is the detailed balance condition which is sufficient to produce for you an equilibrium solution because it just says that the equilibrium distribution is just the ratio of these rates wjk over wkj gives the ratio of pj equilibrium over pk equilibrium and of course you could ask but that only gives a ratio of these probabilities how do i find the numbers themselves what would you say i normalize the whole thing has to be normalized to unity and that gives the overall constant so this is a very very important subclass of possibilities this is an important class of possibilities where you have detailed balance and of course whether it obtains or not depends on the physics of the situation okay. mention this because we will come back to this we will see that uh, there are reaction reactive diffusive equations where we are going to impose the detailed balance condition based on physical considerations yeah. Yeah. if it has a non trivial equilibrium distribution yes certainly yeah if it is an aperiodic irreducible chain then and it has an equilibrium distribution it will certainly be ergodic yes it will jump from one to the other it is not saying that things are going to stop it is just like an invariant measure. So the dynamics continues it is just that under time evolution that distribution does not change right. So for example the gas particles in this room if I assume that these collisions have sufficiently short term memory that the processes are all describable by Markov processes then look at the velocity distribution of the particles of gas in this room it is a Maxwellian distribution under equilibrium conditions and the whole idea is in spite of the collisions going on in spite of the dynamics going on the Maxwellian distribution does not change. So it is an invariant distribution it is an equilibrium distribution so that is exactly the point it is exactly like saying we went back a few steps saying that the density phase space density obeys an equation like h with, with rho and the whole point of equilibrium statistical mechanics was that in equilibrium thermal equilibrium this is 0. So we discovered that those distributions the phase space distributions had to be functions of the Hamiltonian what functions they were depended on the external conditions if you kept a system in isolation a closed system in thermal equilibrium then that density is uniform on the energy hypersurface that is the micro canonical ensemble if you kept it in contact with a heat path such that it could exchange energy with the surroundings but not matter but not mass then this rho was some specific thing called the Gibbs distribution it was e to the minus beta h where beta is 1 over kt Boltzmann's constant times the temperature if you kept it as an open system which could exchange matter as well as uh, energy with the surroundings then you worked in the grand canonical ensemble and this rho involved not just the Hamiltonian e to the minus beta h but there was an extra factor which depended on the chemical potential of the system and the number of particles in it. So this thing here is just this, this is precisely this is an example of the kind of invariant distribution that you deal with in physical situations the point I am making is that the distribution itself the probability distribution itself is invariant under the time evolution but it is not that transitions are not occurring they are occurring all the time but keeps the entire distribution unchanged so is that does that answer the question okay, okay. I must point out that detailed balance does not have to obtain always there are special physical reasons in certain systems why it obtains and then you have a very particularly simple uh, particularly simple solution to the problem of finding the invariant distribution but that is or equilibrium distribution does not have to happen always but you can however in principle ask is there does yeah is it the change in probability and not probability for 
yeah this was for the discrete case so if I want to convert this now to a time equation like delta p over delta t yeah then I would subtract from this p j of n minus 1 and then go to the limit in which the time becomes the time step becomes 0 and then I end up with the master equation okay. So this equation here is for a chain it just says at time n minus 1 you reach this at every at unit intervals I am making transitions and I have reached this state k at n minus 1 this is the probability and the next step is to flip to j. So this gives me the probability that having reached the state k at time n minus 1 in the next step I am at state j and this tells me how much flows out at this stage I have already I am in the state j at n minus 1 and in the next step I move out. Yes exactly I have assumed throughout that these things are independent of time these are constants some given constants what would you say is this mark, uh, what would you say, what sort of chain would you say it is Markov chain would you say it is if these were themselves n dependent would still be Markov Markov just means one step memory but what sort of uh, chain would that be if these were n dependent this would be like the non autonomous systems we looked at in the case of dynamical systems. So what would you say what kind of chain would this be the statistical properties change with time and it would therefore be a non stationary random process it would still be Markov but non stationary and then of course there is no question of a stationary distribution in that case. So I have assumed that this this set of numbers is independent of n itself and the n dependence comes here completely Sir, like yeah yes that is the, uh, for if yes. you are analyzing a problem that is given to you yes like how do you justify uh, varying the time step so that you ah no 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 yeah that is a good question the question is is the time step arbitrary or not okay there are problems where if the time step is given to me and it is discrete and the state space is discrete it is a Markov chain if the Markov conditions are satisfied okay. However there could be other problems which I could start by modeling in terms of a discrete time dynamics but where the dynamics is actually running in continuous time and then to derive those differential equations I could start by writing down difference equations and then moving to the continuum limit that is the way you derive differential equations in any case in most physical problems you start by asking what happens at finite increments and then go to the limit in which delta t goes to 0 and it would lead in general to differential equations yeah no not at all I mean no not at all I mean it is nothing to do with whether it is discrete or continuous or anything like that no I do not have to set that I would say this is equal to I mean if I if I say this is independent of n yeah exactly I take the limit in which n goes to infinity and ask is there a non-trivial limit right if there is a non-trivial limit that is my stationary distribution is not it yeah so all I have to do is to ask does this have a finite limit does this does this thing have a limit as n goes to infinity. And the idea is that in most cases if the chain is ergodic that limit will be independent of what p of 0 is as long as everything is connected to everything else just like the invariant measure was independent of what the initial distribution was in the case of the dynamical systems we looked at so in the same spirit if it is nah that is a subtle question is this true or not is the question uh, let me let me explain this that is a good point let us look at it in continuous time we saw that for stationary Markov processes everything was decided by two quantities one of was the probability distribution of the variable itself the probability density function for continuous variables huh? and the other one was a conditional density which looked like this so we have assumed stationarity we have assumed time is continuous we have assumed that the state space is also continuous and these are probability density functions this one is the one time density function but that is independent of the origin of time so there is no t sitting there 
and this one was a function of x t x naught comma t naught but by stationarity I subtract the t naught out and it is a function of just one time here okay. Now the interesting question is is limit t tends to infinity p of x t x naught is this such that it loses memory of its initial condition and becomes equal to p of x or not this is the question one asks always and the statement I made was that if the system has a sufficient degree of mixing then this is true when this happens. So this is essentially what happens in the case of these Markov processes the kind of Markov process we are talking about this is what happens the fact that it is in continuous time is irrelevant I mean I could rewrite this in discrete time it does not matter. My question is yeah. not necessary it is not very clear why that should be so why should it be so Markov process do not have memory more than one uh, the yeah. previous one too. yeah so it actually implies yeah it implies this is not necessarily true it implies that this system it is not a question of the memory being short that has been taken care of already in saying that everything all the joint probabilities are decided by the just this two time probability but now if the correlation between the variable the autocorrelation function of this variable dies slowly enough as t goes to infinity there is actually no reason why this should happen why this limit should go to this at all it is an assumption that is made in general it is a sort of consistency condition but to prove it rigorously is another story altogether. So it is not I do not believe that this is so that as soon as you say the process is Markov that this is true but I am not 100 percent sure I will check this out but it strikes me that this is an independent this is an independent statement further input that has been put into this that has got to be added to the system but I will check this out okay all right. Let me go back now and talk about the idea of a recurrence and this is something which we um, will deal with when we do coarse grain dynamical systems we looked at a two cell dynamics if you like for the tent asymmetric tent map in which you went from the left to the right and back again and so on. But let us do this in a slightly more general setting in higher dimensions in general and see that there is an extremely simple formula for the mean recurrence time which is important to understand it is called the Poincare recurrence formula it is valid for all ergodic systems does not have to be chaotic or anything like that and it goes as follows the derivation is simple so let me do that and it goes as follows. So we look at a recurrence let me call it recurrence time statistics we start with a phase space of this kind arbitrary dimensionality we will work it out in discrete time in terms of maps and we could make it continuous later there are some subtleties involved but for ease of illustration let us look at discrete time dynamics. And I have a point an initial point x naught out here and at time 1 it jumps somewhere else and then somewhere else and somewhere else and an orbit is formed by this point x naught okay. and I ask the following question I divide up my phase space into cells in this fashion and I focus on one particular cell let me call this cell C I assume there is an invariant measure and I assume that the dynamics is ergodic in other words any set of initial conditions that little volume element would visit all of this available phase space given enough time okay. I do not assume anything else just ergodicity nothing more than that and now I ask if I start with the initial point in C then what is the first time that I come back to C what is the probability that I come back to C at the nth time step that is one question the second question is what is the mean time in discrete time steps of some time step tau in discrete multiples of this time step tau what is the mean time to come back then I could ask what is the variance what is the statistics in general. So I would like to discover what 
the statistics of recurrences to this cell C look like that is the target and I assume that there are invariant measures there is an invariant measure on this and the measure of this cell C let me call it mu of C and let us assume that the whole phase space is not its measure invariant measure is normalized to unity so I do not have to keep dividing pardon me we computed and we said well we said that this is equal to the time step divided by mu I would like to derive this formula I would like to derive this from first principles but in principle in, in general I would like to derive the statistics itself not just the mean time maybe the variance I would like to find out exactly what it is. So this is the target now how do we go about this well it turns out there is a very elegant and a simple formalism to do this which goes as follows first let us ask what do I mean by the probability of a recurrence to this cell what I mean by it is the joint probability that and now let me in keeping with our notation write earlier times to the right and later times to the left I want the joint probability that if I start at the cell C at time 0 I leave this cell and I come back at time n. So I want the joint probability that having started here I am in the complement of this cell so let me call the rest of it that means the rest of this other than the shaded portion okay. So I am in C tilde at time 1 and let me call this time step tau let me set it equal to 1 for the moment. C tilde 2 and so on till I hit C at time n C tilde at time n minus 1. So this conditional probability is what I would like to compute okay. what is that equal to well we know that this conditional probability is a certain joint probability divided by the absolute probability of this thing here. So this is equal to P C n C tilde n minus 1 dot C tilde 1 C 0 divided by P of C 0 but this P of C0 since I am assuming that the system has an invariant distribution measure and everything is stationary this P C comma 0 is independent of the time origin it is independent of this time argument and it is just P of C and that is nothing but the measure of this cell itself so this is the same as mu of C. I use P of C and mu of C interchangeably they are exactly the same thing remember that I have normalized the total volume or the total measure invariant measure of the space space to unity. So then I can talk I can replace P of C by just mu of C okay. and it is this quantity I would like to compute but what is this quantity since the variable that I have is this point x naught which moves around here so let us do the following let us write this as a multiple integral over the phase space times what now what should I write here it is d mu that is the measure of x d mu this is rho of x dx if you like d mu of x over this measure right times what is the first point that I should write down. I am going to start at time 0 inside the cell hmm? and let me define the so called indicator function chi of x to be equal to plus 1 if x is an element of the cell equal to 0 if x is an element of C tilde it is like a theta function 
so it is equal to 1 if the point is inside and 0 if it is outside that is it. Since I am going to start there so this is chi of x definitely and how does this x evolve we have already assumed that this x evolves x n is equal to some f let me not use this cumbersome notation it is some operator t acting on x n minus 1. This is the map function if you like but I have written it here as some operator which acts on x n minus 1 and produces x sub n just for ease of notation. This is the time development operator which takes me from time n minus 1 to time n. So what happens next at time 1 it should be outside therefore you should multiply this by 1 minus the indicator function of t on x because at time 1 this guy should be outside and the same thing should happen for time 2 and 3 up to n minus 1. So let me write a t power k which says this is the same map iterated k fold on x a product from k equal to 1 up to n minus 1 and then so you start here you jump out and you stay out and come back at time step n. So the last factor is chi at time n so it is t n x. So formally this is this probability the whole thing normalized by 1 over mu of c. So although the notation looks elaborate the reason for it is it is in complete generality. So very complicated time evolution is taken care of here by writing this abstract operator t. If this is a set of very complicated very complicated nonlinear map it is still taken care of by writing this and this t k stands for the kth iterate of this map just as t to the n is the nth iterate of this map and you have to do this integral in principle and that gives you this conditional probability which is the probability of a recurrence to the cell at time n. So this is the probability with respect to which I start taking averages but first I have to compute this number in some simple fashion. Now let me introduce the following auxiliary quantity. Let me define W n tilde to be equal to the probability so for that I just write p probability that if I start in the complement of this cell at time 0 I remain there till time n minus 1 okay. So this stands for c complement 0 it is a joint probability here for starting there remaining there all these do exactly the same thing and the last one this is the definition p of being in this cell uh, c tilde at time n n greater than equal to 1. So I define the measure of those events where I start with the representative point in the complement of this cell and I do not leave this at all I do not leave the complement I do not enter the cell C but at time n minus 1 I am still 
in the complement. Pardon me? All of them are C tilde, every one of them is C tilde. Yeah. So, I do not enter the cell C at all. So, here is C and the rest is C tilde. So, I start somewhere here and I, the orbit goes on out here, but never enters this. The measure of that set of points, let me call that W n tilde. It is clear that W 1 tilde is equal to, if I said n equal to 0, n equal to 1 in this, this is just the invariant measure of C tilde. So, this is mu of C tilde because it is just P of C tilde 0, the origin of time does not matter. So, it is just mu of C tilde and therefore, this implies a very useful relation which is mu of C equal to 1 minus W 1 tilde. because remember the total measure is 1. So, mu of C plus mu of C tilde is equal to 1 by definition and therefore, mu of C is 1 minus W 1 tilde. Let us also further define it will become useful W 0 tilde to be identically equal to 1 itself. We will see why that is necessary and useful. What can we say about this sequence W n tilde? This is a sequence of numbers now starting with 1, W 1 tilde is some number less than 1 between 0 and 1 and so on. What can we say about this set of numbers? Is it an increasing sequence or a decreasing sequence as n increases? It should decrease because this is the probability that the system does not move enter C at all. So, it is a sequence which is bounded from below because these have got to be non negative numbers being probabilities. So, the sequence is bounded by 0 from below starts at 1 and is a non increasing sequence bounded from below. Therefore, there is a theorem in analysis which says such a sequence has a limit point. In other words just the statement that this sequence W n is a non is a decreasing a non increasing <coughs> sequence bounded from below by 0 because it is clear that this the set of numbers cannot become negative implies limit w n limit n tends to infinity w n tilde exists. Okay. That is a rigorous theorem in analysis. There is no reason why this limit should exist, it could just oscillate, but this is guaranteed that such a limit point, such a sequence has a limit. Okay. Now, what does ergodicity have to say about this sequence? What would you say is implied by ergodicity for this limit? We know that given enough time any set of initial conditions has to visit the entire phase space including C. Therefore, it is quite clear that as n increases and n tends to infinity what is the limit of W n tilde should be 0 by ergodicity. So, that is the assumption that is the rigorous assumption which says by ergodicity and let me write that here. This is where the input goes in. is strictly 0 and this limit exists and is in fact 0. Okay. Now, let us try and simplify this a little bit. So, what is the trick one would use? Well, if you had only these factors and nothing more just a set of these factors then you can easily see that it is related to this sequence because this is precisely the probability joint probability that you start with C tilde and you remain in C tilde if you had this thing here. But unfortunately you cannot do that because you have this factor and you have this factor. What would you suggest? We somehow have to convert them to these factors. So, what would you suggest? Hmm. 
add and subtract 1 right you would add and subtract 1 this is all you would do. So if you did that then the following happens so let us do that and then a remarkable formula emerges so this P of C n C tilde n minus 1 C tilde 1 C 0 so for the moment let me just look at the numerator so this 2 is unconditional which is this multiple integral could be written as equal to integral d mu x times instead of chi of x let me call this 1 minus chi of x and then subtract the 1 uh, should be careful about minus signs though so let, let me let us do that slowly so let me write chi of x chi of p n x let me write this this quantity and subtract the rest of it out so this minus well the first term that I have to subtract out is this 1 clearly uh, and then what what else do I have to subtract uh, I hope I am not uh, what else do I have to subtract plus chi of x plus chi of t to the power n x right uh, minus 1 minus 1 I write it in this fashion okay. Now if I plug this in here if I put that in here then what would this integral become? It would it would say you are going to start at z so it would correspond to starting it would correspond to starting in the cell c, c tilde at time zero and then continuing all the way up to time n here so what would that become it would be w tilde of n plus one because we define w tilde of n as staying in this complement from zero up to n minus one so you would immediately get a w tilde of n plus one and then you have this term and this term right so let us write this once again by adding and subtracting right I write this as equal to so this portion let me rewrite this as minus 1 minus chi of x right in this fashion so that takes care of this portion and then I am left with this and this term let me write it as this term as equal to uh, minus 1 minus chi of t and x this fashion and what have I done now? I have uh, subtracted this so I write it as plus 1 right so I put them all together and what do I get I end up with this probability is equal to we already saw that you had a w n plus 1 tilde and this term here corresponded to just the product pi from k equal to 1 to n minus 1 right so that would give me 
W tilde of n minus one plus W tilde of n minus one that takes care of this term and it takes care of the original term this term this product and then I have minus this minus that. Now what is this term? So this says you are going to sum with this product. Now what does that say? What does that give you? It gives you W tilde of n huh? with a minus sign. What does this give you? The what does that give you? That is where you need a little bit of subtlety huh? because this term here is really saying it is integral d mu x let us write it out product from k equal to 1 to n minus 1 1 minus chi of t n x t k x and then it is multiplied by 1 minus chi of t n x it is this term agreed. So I could make this n and get rid of this but what is that equal to? What is that equal to? Unfortunately, I cannot write it as a W immediately because the integration is over x, but the characteristic functions here are over T x and k runs from 1 upwards. Unfortunately, what use is that going to be? It is inside the integral. It is inside the integral unfortunately. So what can I do about this? You are integrating over x which is the time 0 if you like but then everything else is happening all the integrand involves whatever happens at time 1, 2, 3 etc. So this is giving you the probability some kind of probability it is trying to give you but it is over t x, t squared x and so on. But you see this is an invariant measure that is the whole point of invariant measure that if you apply the T operator to X the invariant measure does not change at all. So this is true that is the meaning of invariant measure. does not change at all which implies I can change variables from x to t, t x and nothing happens and once I do that then this becomes w n immediately. So that gives you another factor of w n which is twice this okay, divided by mu of c to get the actual recurrence probability. Okay. So we collect all these results and let us write our final result which is that this conditional probability that we are interested in this thing here is now been rigorously proven to be equal to w n minus 1 minus twice w n plus w n plus 1 tilde divided by mu of c but mu of c was 1 minus mu of c tilde but c tilde was w1 tilde but we define this to be w0 so that gives you the actual recurrence time probability this is the probability
after time interval n. Hmm. You are guaranteed, we have to check normalization, but you are actually guaranteed that this is a positive number because this is a decreasing sequence tending to 0 in the limit and therefore this is like the second derivative of this object and this you can see that it is actually saying that this is a sequence if you plot as a continuous function is concave upwards because it has got a lower limit which is finite. So this quantity is non-negative and is in fact the exact probability distribution but you can now ask what is the mean time to recurrence here therefore if I call that mean time to recurrence to the cell C T sub C this is equal to first of all I need to show that this is normalized you have to make sure that this guy is normalized so let us check that out first what is and let us call give it some number there is some name so let me call this guy uh, R for recurrence C of N let us call it R C of N we have to make sure that summation R C of N over all allowed values of N should be 1 otherwise there is no guarantee that recurrence is a certain event we know it is ergodic and it better be equal to 1 but we got to make sure of this. So what is this equal to what is the least value of N for which this is valid from 1 1 all right so what do you get so this is a common factor times if you call it 1 then this is w0 tilde minus 2 w1 tilde plus 2 tilde plus w1 tilde minus 2 w2 tilde plus w3 tilde plus w2 tilde minus 2 w3 tilde plus etc. So what happens now? So it is quite evident that w2 tilde for example will appear twice and get cancelled so will w3 w4 etc and you are left with just finally so everything gets cancelled except w0 tilde minus w1 tilde plus twice plus single times w1 tilde so this whole thing collapses to just this okay. that is equal to 1. So it is evident that if you this thing is normalized. it is a normalized probability distribution okay. now we can find the average and what is the average distribution what is the average recurrence time so since we are using n at this key time n see this is the mean cell C what does this give you this is equal to a summation n equal to 1 to infinity n times R n R C of n now what is this equal to so that again this is simple to see this is 1 over W0 tilde minus W1 tilde multiplied by 1 times this so w0 tilde minus 2 w1 tilde plus w2 tilde plus twice when n equal to 2 so it is twice w1 tilde minus 4 times w2 tilde plus twice w3 tilde plus now thrice the next one so thrice w2 tilde minus 6 w3 tilde plus thrice w4 tilde plus dot 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 
etc. So this obligingly cancels out and what are we left with? So this guy cancels out so twice this plus 4 times that minus 6 cancels out and so on everything cancels out <coughs> and you are left with this is equal to w not tilde over w not tilde minus w 1 tilde but w not tilde is 1 by definition and this guy is 1 minus w 1 tilde which is the measure of the complement therefore it is 1 over mu c. So this whole thing finally is equal to 1 over mu c. In time steps of 1 had we used a time step tau it would be tau over mu c okay this is the Poincare recurrence theorem. So it proves rigorously that when you have coarse grain dynamics of this kind if the system is ergodic and has an invariant measure then you are guaranteed that the mean time of recurrence to any cell is inversely proportional is just the reciprocal of the measure of that invariant measure of that cell a very useful piece of information and a very general statement we went through a little bit of formalism but it is a very general statement the assumptions were minimal and completely rigorous we just assumed ergodicity and the existence of an invariant measure and this statement follows at once. If you have time steps which then go to 0 continuously that becomes a little more subtle because it is not very clear if this formula can be just translated directly because if I put a tau here instead of a 1 and let tau go to 0 then formally any finite measured cell will have a 0 recurrence time which is absurd. And that is because of a flaw in the argument which does not take this possibility into account we counted as a recurrence something where the system stays in the cell itself because we started at n equal to 1. So really you should start by saying it goes out and comes back and then taking the continuous time limit is a little trickier you have to subtract the measure of all those points all those events where the system starts at time 0 in this cell and remains there at time 1 that is a fake recurrence with a recurrence time of 1 so you should subtract that and if you improve the formula for which there is exists such a formula then you get an improved formula for this which changes this slightly but in general apart from that technicality this is a very general uh, result which is useful in many cases. So it gives you a quick order of magnitude estimate of how long it takes to recur here. Now this is used in principle even in statistical mechanics in large systems it turns out that this is the time for coming back the Poincare recurrence time the mean time and when you have a very large system then this thing here can be shown the time can be shown to grow like the exponential some exponential of the number of degrees of freedom which is why the macroscopic world appears irreversible to us because even if the statistical properties did not change and everything went on as before without aging even then the time for the system to recur would become exponentially large in the number of degrees of freedom and if you have 10 to the 23 degrees of freedom then this is more than astronomically large e to the 10 to the 23 is so large that it does not matter whether I measure units in time in units of seconds or microseconds or ages of the universe it does not matter at all it is exactly the same impossibly large number. So that is the reason why macroscopically things appear to be irreversible even though in principle if you did not have any dissipation you had dynamical systems which for even if you said that the system was conservative and did not have any um, irreversibility built into it the recurrence times would become impossibly large unrealistically large that is the, the reason you do not see it in practice okay I do, I do not want to get into the details of macroscopic irreversibility here it is a subject by itself but this result is used in deducing these orders of magnitude okay. So let me stop here and we will continue next time slightly different topic go back. <coughs>